This is about stick welding with 7018, and it's basically like a, a whole curriculum, starting at flat beads, going all the way to a 6G test. I made this video aimed at both students and instructors and people that are thinking about going to welding school. It'll give you a really good idea on what you're up against. If you are an instructor, I'd love to connect with you and see if I can help you with your welding program. There's a link in the description on how to contact me. Let's do it. A lot of programs start off with a simple bead on plate. Sometimes that would be a 6013 or other electrode, but this is a 7018 video, so I'm using a 7018. Simple bead on plate doesn't get much more simple than that. And of course you want to get it smooth and uniform and where the slag peels up. And that just takes a little bit of practice. Next up might be padding beads with the 7018. All that means is stacking one bead about halfway over top of the previous bead. It's excellent practice, so don't shortcut it and take it seriously. Sometimes you might drag that bead, other times you might use just a little bit of a working motion like this. Either way, the same concept applies. You want to stack that bead halfway over top of the previous bead so that there are no low valleys. You don't want to stack it over halfway over because that way you'll have a little bit of a mounded up or overlap bead. And you'll do yourself a favor to fill up a whole plate full of beads just like this. But whatever you do, do it with intention. Try to make every bead straighter than the last one. Concentrate and try to improve with each bead. 7018 is a low hydrogen electrode. A 7018 is only low hydrogen if it came out of the box within a certain period of time or if it came out of a rod oven at a certain temperature for a certain period of time. All these things are specified in procedures and codes. But the bottom line is if you leave a 7018 out overnight, it's no longer low hydrogen. When you get out of welding school and get on the job site, you're probably going to have to keep your 7018 rods in a rod oven and make sure to keep that thing plugged up. Something you might do next after padding beads is a horizontal T. They call that a 2F position. And usually you'll do a multi-pass, not so much that the metal thickness you're practicing on needs multiple passes, but because you want to get the most out of the metal. You don't want to waste metal. So you'll put that first bead in there, you make sure to clean it good, chip the slag, wire brush it, and then stack that next bead about two-thirds over the previous bead. Don't, don't do like I did when I first learned and try to just stack it halfway over. You'll wind up with a low valley. About two-thirds, and then that third bead will go in there a lot better. That third bead will go in there a little bit slower, and if you do it right, you should have a decent, even fillet. I like to do cut and etch tests to verify my penetration. Your school may not have the capability of doing that, but it is a great learning tool. This might be out of sequence, but eventually you'll probably do a 2G plate. A G stands for groove weld. A 2G plate might be given for a certification for a structural welding job, and it involves stacking beads, so the skill set is kind of the same that you learn when you're padding beads. That's why I said earlier not to shortcut that padding bead exercise because that's where you learn this skill in stacking beads. And you'll get a lot more practice at it padding beads than you will running the joints. Now let's talk about restarts with 7018 because they don't restart all that well. But they'll restart much better if you'll take a file and knock that cone off the tip to where you got bare metal again. Out in the field you might do this a different way but if you're taking a test I highly recommend a file. On thicker metal, like one inch thick, some codes require a preheat. And sometimes you might be using a big hog leg rod, like a 3 16 diameter. The bigger the rod, the more difficult it is to run out of position, like vertical uphill and overhead. But for flat and horizontal, a big rod puts down a lot more metal, it's more productive. Some school curriculums might have you do uphill padding in the vertical position. And once again, it is some of the best practice you can get. There's no point in wasting a bunch of metal running uphill on T-joints when you can't even run a vertical bead yet. So it makes sense just to get lots of practice, pay attention to rod angle and how to set your machine, how to watch that puddle, how to read the puddle. Then you can move on to the 3F T-joint vertical uphill. Vertical and overhead are much less forgiving when it comes to rod angle and arc length, so you got to really pay attention to that. Generally speaking, you're going to use just a little bit less amperage for vertical uphill than you would for flat or horizontal. And that's mainly because you're fighting gravity and you're trying to control that puddle while gravity is trying to make it sag. One of the best ways to control that puddle is to have the amperage set right and hold a tight arc length. And when I say tight, I mean you can just about feel the flux on the outside of that rod kind of scrubbing 
on the metal, especially on those toes when you hold the toes to avoid undercut. That was a weave pass we just looked at, but some jobs are requiring stringer passes now, so you'll need to practice that. After padding beads vertical, this should be fairly easy. It's the same thing. And once again, to get the most out of the metal, not waste metal, you'll want to do a multi-pass fillet weld. You might want to put a whole bunch of passes on there. And once again, I like to test things, and you can see where each individual pass went in with a cut and etch test, a very valuable learning tool. When I was in welding school, I don't think I ever got to run a 532 7018, but some jobs are requiring them now, especially structural jobs. A 532 is only just a little bit more difficult than a 1 8 and it all boils down to arc length and having your amperage set right and using the right technique. This technique really seems to help that bead flatten out, and you can be assured you're going to get penetration into the root of that joint. And with a 532 rod, it really does help to clean that mill scale first to avoid undercut. A 3G plate test is going to be a very common test for shipyards. And in fact, oftentimes they'll give a 3G in conjunction with a 4G for an all position qualification. A typical scenario would be a quarter inch gap with a quarter inch backing strap. There's a little bit of tolerance on the gap, but I would choose the full quarter inch, maybe even the full tolerance to have enough room to get that root pass in there. That root pass is super important on a plate test like this with a backing strap. I can't emphasize enough to spend a lot of time on padding beads vertical uphill because that's what will prepare you for this test better than anything. Let's move on to overhead now. One of the first things you'll do is a T-joint in overhead position, also called 4F. A 4F is just about the same as a 2F. It's just upside down. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you is don't turn the machine way down cold thinking that this is going to fall out on you. It will fall out on you if you hold a long arc, but your amperage can be up there almost as high as it is in the horizontal position. You just have to hold that long arc and utilize that arc force to make that bead flatten out. Did I mention I like to do cut and etch tests? It is a great learning tool. Let's take a look now at how not to weld overhead with 7018. And I say that because I, I did this when I was in welding school and it gave me fits. See, I'm holding a really long arc right here. And we got blobs of metal falling down. And that stuff was falling down, getting inside my shirt. But when I learned to hold a tight arc, all that went away. Now let's look at a true overhead rooftop position. This is great practice for coming off the bottom of pipe. This is kind of like leading you on to pipe welding. Coming off the bottom at 6 o'clock, you'll need to pay attention to a rod angle and hold it straight in like this. You need to pay attention to your arc length and hold it nice and tight. And again, once you get that first pass in, you might as well get more out of the metal by putting additional passes, either weaving or stringers, that'll prepare you for pipe later on. And speaking of getting prepared for pipe, this joint position here is an excellent one because this is like after you've come off the bottom and you start turning that corner, you're at kind of a hybrid between overhead and vertical, and this, this, this plate will, will give you practice at that. It's neither technically overhead or technically vertical, it's just good practice. Let's move on to a 4G plate test. That's an overhead plate test with a back and strap. They say the ABCs of welding are always be comfortable. There's, it's, it's really true on an overhead like this. You've got to figure out a way that you can be comfortable and be steady because being comfortable will let you hold a tight arc length and let you be steady and smooth. Same things apply on amperage on this joint. You don't want to set it down too cold. Toward the end of a curriculum is usually a 6G test, and a common one is a 6-inch Schedule 80, 6010 root, 7018 fill and cap. I'll just show the 7018 portion of it here because this is a video about 7018. This is the first pass of 7018 after the root pass. On this particular joint, the root pass has been ground down a little bit to remove slag. But your goal here is to make sure not to leave any slag behind. Don't leave any lack of fusion behind. And then once you get that thing filled up, it's time for the cover pass. A pro tip on that cover pass is to point that rod upward a little bit to avoid drooping on the bottom part of that bead. A 6G test is as much about body positioning and repositioning and moving your body along as you move up the pipe as it is about anything. Another common test is a 2-inch Schedule 80 with a 332 6010 root and 7018 fill and cap. This is just the cap. This is the first test I ever took and the first test I ever failed. Wasn't the last one I failed, but I failed it. And then many years later, I got to film this video with my good friend Andrew Carden.
If you are a welding instructor, I hope this helps and I hope you'll click the link in the description and connect with me and let's see if I can help.